Hi, my name is Carlos Dorrera. I'm Communication Director of Rismatics. Here we are in the context of the Risk Management Training Conference, and I have the pleasure to have with us one of our old friends, a Rismatics old colleague, um, Mr. Suresh Sankaram, Head of Model Risk at Metro Bank in the UK. Mr. Suresh, what a pleasure to have you back with us. It is always a pleasure to be back here, and more so after a, a hiatus of four years where you had uh, virtual conferences which were effective, but did not do justice to what you are doing for the broader risk community, not just in Mexico, but for Latin America as a whole. Okay, thank you very much for your words. Um, I want to start with an anecdote from three years ago, uh, February 2021. Sorry, February 2022. They were saying Putin is, Putin is not gonna invade Ukraine, uh, doesn't make sense, doesn't make economic sense, doesn't make financial sense, doesn't fit into our model. Mm. Uh, and they were saying this to the very last day before he invaded Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And then they kept wondering why is it that they could not see, especially chief risk officers, yeah. could not see the risk that everybody else was seeing. Mm. What happened there? The chief risk officer is in the process of being reinvented. That position is being reinvented. If you look back four years, and if you'd ask me the same question as to, you know, who should be an ideal CRO, my answer would have been completely different. Four years ago, my answer would have been focused on what I call the traditional risks that manifested banking then, as they do now. But now, because of technology, because of um, the wildness of people, because of um, geopolitics, as you pointed out, there are more risks that are being fostered on to on onto the the CRO, you mean the risk function, which basically means that the CRO now not just a person who is a generalist. This is a person who has to be a specialist. This is a person who has to understand at granular detail the various risks associated with an organization. And I know that I'm being a little long-winded to getting to your response, but bear with me. So, when it comes to why the CRO did not foresee this event happening, it is because it was not in the CRO's radar. And also, there, is, there were no committees, there were no discussions around how this would impact the organization. There may have been conversations at credit committees. There may have been conversations at operational committees. But at the CRO's level, this information was not brought in, disseminated or digested. And so, today, the CRO is a much more aware individual. Because on hindsight, you have taken into consideration the fact that this was a mistake that should not have happened. And now, if you are the CRO, the CRO is much more focused, more balanced around these new and emerging risks. And he is a wiser person because of the, the debacle that happened in 2022. Okay. Um, does this mean that we have to re-educate the CROs or do we need a new generation of CROs completely? Both. I believe that um, the, the days of the the CRO coming from within the organization who was an expert in one area of risk and had a reasonable understanding of other areas of risk are gone. Now the CRO has to be more hands-on. The CRO has to be a, a mathematician to understand model risk, to understand market risk, to understand derivatives. And these are all complex areas of specialization, which takes a lifetime of experience to assimilate. And so the new gen CRO must require constant professional re-education, a reiteration of the training that starts with reaffirmation of the basics and then moving on to new things, things like uh, AI, uh, the artificial intelligence or machine learning, things like how regulatory interference is impacting your margins and how we can navigate through these waters how risk interconnectedness is having an impact on bank balance sheet and PNL. A CRO now has to be both a more resilient person 
as well as a more knowledgeable person. And so, yes, a re-education is required as well as a renovation in the thinking. And that requires new blood, perhaps. Okay. Let's talk about this view that you have of this comprehensive, or I could almost say 360 degrees vision in contrast to a narrow vision that we had before. Which, again, it goes to what I said earlier. A blinkered approach is primarily a result of um, a lack of awareness. Uh, you know, there's an old anecdote about uh, somebody looking at a Picasso painting and saying that the painting looked like a shoe, to which Picasso responded, to a cobbler, everything looks like a shoe. So if a CRO came in from the ranks of credit, the focus and everything was boiled down to credit. And because that was something they understood instinctively and well. But now we are talking about a shift away from your core competency into something which is not necessarily at your core. So, you know, your geopolitical risk is not at the heart of every CRO's uh, curriculum vitae. And therefore, for you to say that I have to, you know, understand, proactively uh, counteract and then manage my balance sheet through these troubled times requires, as you correctly point out, a, a wider vision, an almost 360 type vision where you are looking at risks that are coming in from not just the front, which are your core competencies or your traditional risks, but are also coming in from various other directions that you least expect them. The, the problem relating to, you know, a China-USA conflict impacting Mexico is something that a CRO would not have considered before. But now it has to be very much part of your profile. And therefore, that 360 awareness is absolutely crucial. Okay. Final question. How do events like this, organized by Reefsmatics, can help transform or create the new generation of CROs? You see, what Reefsmatics does is, I think, more than a conference. It provides a service. It is producing a stable of professionals who are coming out of its, um, its melting pot of um, the interaction between various risks. And they are coming out very well enriched individuals and so can take on any challenge head on. It basically means that it is not just a conference producer. It is a, a talent pool creator. You know, I have been uh, lucky to be associated with um, with Prismatics for almost the entire period that it has been in existence. And I have seen its humble beginnings and its transformation into the largest risk event, not just in Latin America, but I feel in the world perhaps. And so what it is doing is it is not losing sight like some of the other conference producers have. It has not become commercial. It has not become uh, a sponsored event yet it is still at, the, at its heart remains an education program an education program that brings you talent and it identifies talent it nurtures the talent through various courses and its other activities and then is let loose in the marketplace where the individual actually thrives in in the current scenarios and environments. And that, that's the reason why conferences like, the importance of conferences like uh, Prismatics, the, the events that you create, can't be underscored. Okay, thank you very much for your words, Mr. Suresh, and hope to see you in the future again to continue discuss, discussing these wholly debated issues of risk, administration, management, and the profile that the markets need to fulfill them. Thank you very much. It's been always a pleasure to be back with Prismatics and I hope this relationship will continue for a long time to come.